Wonderful. Well, a big welcome then to the seven habits of successful accountants. My name's David Oliver. Looking forward very much to taking you through today's material. Today is hosted by My Firm's App South Africa and uh, just a little bit about My Firm's App, if I may. It's a global fintech company which puts accountants first. That sounds like a marketing strap line, doesn't it? It really isn't. Let me tell you what I mean by that. As we're going to see together, the landscape for us uh, in the accountancy community has changed quite dramatically. And if we are trusted advisors, which we are, and if that privilege and responsibility has any practical meaning, then it means that they, whoever they are, will turn to us first. First for tax, first for pensions, first for legacy uh, advice, maybe first for estate planning, inheritance tax planning, and so on. And I think it's true to say, and hopefully we'll see this together, that we do run the very real risk of losing this trusted advisor status, not because of poor performance or malpractice, but simply because of disengagement. In other words, we're not available on the platform of communication that virtually all our clients will want or prefer us to use. So my firm's app is the world's leading custom app solution for accounting firms. In fact, the data on the slide slightly out of date. It's around a thousand firms as we speak today, and it's endorsed by those good folks that you will know well in South Africa: Mark Lloyd, Bottom, Paul Dunn, and many others. As far as uh, I'm aware, it's the only globally approved custom app platform, and you can see the accreditation bodies down here on the left-hand side. Now, uh, Carlin, I promised to tell you what you'll get today. You're going to get a massive stack of resources which the Cape Town team have secured for you. So big thanks to the Cape Town team. You're going to get a, a set of slides. You'll get a transcript of all the material on audio. You'll get an invitation from Craig or Bjorn to an exclusive follow-on web event. You're going to get a free 64-page ebook and a reference pack uh, which will enable you just to check the various templates and things we discuss. Now, one of the challenges always on these webinars, of course, they are hosted and paid for by My Firm's app in South Africa. And it can feel, therefore, if we talk about the app as if it's a, a full on sales pitch. And as a team over the last year or two, with nearly 50,000 accountants going through these programs, uh, we've thought about this long and hard and the simplest way we feel we can handle this with integrity is to say to you look folks we are going to give you a free app it's not a custom app of course it's a trial app uh, which Craig or Bjorn or the team will talk you through they'll show you how to download it show you how to use it what its tools and functions are so that's going to be my very real pleasure to offer you throughout today's uh, web event at any time you just type free trial please uh, into the question box. In fact, one or two of you have already done that. You've jumped the gun, uh, which is great. If you could also, when you type in free trial, if you could just put a day or a time that would work best for you, for one of the team to call you and set the trial up, that just saves a whole lot of admin for us and it makes it dead easy for you. So some yeah, a thousand firms currently have the app. That's the custom app. Uh, 30,000 clients and prospects use the tools and functions every month, and there are well over 200,000 end users. That's clients and potential clients. I don't know if you saw this online with accounting today, if you get it online, but just last week, uh, the My Firms app product was in the top 10 new products for accountants globally in their spotlight column online apps. So let's take a quick look at the agenda. By the way, seeing your wonderful flag there, I have to tell you this story. The head of development, in fact, the originator of the custom app is a South African. He's a very good friend of mine, Justin May. So he heads up our R&D. But uh, seeing your flag there in, reminded me a couple of months back, we took him with our exec team to Twickenham to watch England play South Africa in the rugby. And I suspect you remember the score. It was one of those few times where we felt really good about our own team. But I could not get Justin to sing the South African anthem. I don't know why he was so reluctant, uh, but he wouldn't. In the end, after a, a few beers, we managed to get something out of him. But anyway, it was a great evening. So today's agenda, breaking with the trusted advisor myths, 
living an authentic mission, vision, and plan that works. Please don't turn off just because you see those three words. I'll tell you why. Understanding, really understanding what your clients want, responding with successful, profitable services, uh, hopefully a new concept that's actually not that new. We call it TMAI. Uh, that is test, measure, adapt, and improve everything in new client acquisition. And then focus, really focus on making your website work. And I'm going to give you three surprising essentials, I think. And then finally, agility. How do we respond with agility to mobile and cloud? That's what we're going to cover. And I'm going to start with a backdrop, uh, if I may, of why these seven habits have been formed in the way they have. And I guess you can see the changing screen in front of you. It's as if we're hitting a nerve because quite a few uh, practitioners and keynote speakers are addressing the issues that we're looking at this year. But let me start with you. Why are you actually attending this web event? Let me challenge your expectations, if I may, please. And this will be totally confidential, by the way, but would you just type into the question box the number one reason why you are attending this webinar today? Just go ahead, <coughs> type it in the question box, if you will. And um, maybe uh, maybe if you can't answer that question easily, um, let, me, let me give you a little prompt. A, a great way of thinking about it would be, what would a successful outcome from this webinar be for you? Okay, uh, we, we want to grow my business. Practice is growing almost too fast. I want to grow my firm. I want to understand how to gain efficiencies in my current processes. I want to learn. Uh, anybody else like to type one in? Uh, better client satisfaction. Okay, some great, uh, great thoughts there. Thank you. And I guess it's true to say, isn't it, that the investment, obviously it's a free webinar, I get that, but to spend 45 minutes to an hour together, that's a massive chunk out of your day. And you're not doing this. You haven't taken the trouble to register and then attend this afternoon because you want everything to stay the same after our time together. Hopefully it's because you'd like to know what others are doing that's making them so successful and hopefully you want to see change, improvements and results. So if I can, before we look at the seven habits, I want to give you a backdrop. Uh, it's what you might call loosely in inverted commas, a prophetic backdrop to the seven habits we're going to look at together. And it's around what I've called very loosely the changing landscape. And I want to say to you that actually I I have never made a comment like this before, and I've been doing what we're doing today for well over three decades, so I've been at this a while. But I believe this year is going to be a watershed year. It's going to be what is loosely called a tipping point. And there are three reasons why I'm pretty confident in making that assertion, and I'll put some substance behind it, but I think... If you want to be successful, you have to understand this backdrop. This is, if you like, the uh, the landscape behind the narrative, the landscape behind the story. So a tipping point, the three reasons why I believe it's going to be a year where it is a tipping point, a watershed year. Firstly, is the definition itself. A tipping point is the point at which a series of small changes or incidents become significant enough to cause a larger, more important change. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, in his great book, The Tipping Point, describes it as that magic moment when an idea, a trend, or a social behavior crosses a threshold, it tips, and then spreads like wildfire, just as a single sick person can start an epidemic of the flu. So reason number one is the definition. Reason number two is the fact that the landscape has changed and it's inexorably continuing that change. And you understand that's not any kind of claim. This is reality. You know, this is type type these questions in anywhere. And, and we would agree uh, this is only going in one direction. And that direction in turn produces in the changing landscape automation innovation, and as a result of those two things, disruption to the way we've always done things. 
Which brings me to reason number three, why I believe it will be a watershed year or a tipping point. Now, I know you do get some snow in South Africa, probably not very often like you see in the picture. But the point I'm making is this. Change happens all the time in life. It happens in nature. It happens in our bodies, in politics. And it seldom requires massive response. But equally, sometimes that change becomes disruption. And when it becomes disruptive, we simply have to take action, whether we like it or whether we don't. And I know you know Mark Lloyd Butter very well in South Africa. He's a personal friend and a great champion of, of my firm's app. But Mark said to me recently, he said, David, one of the biggest challenges for accountants in South Africa is inertia. And it was just actually while he was on a trip uh, in Cape Town, visiting my team in Cape Town at the same time. And I understand what Mark means because I, I appreciate it. it's a sweeping generalization. But as accountants, generally, we kind of shrug our shoulders and expect somebody else to take the lead when it comes to change. If we can kind of wait, keep going with our billable hours so that nothing too much gets interrupted, we'd probably prefer that. But disruption means we can't do that. Inertia then and success become incompatible. Success, which is why you've joined me today, is based on intelligent choices born out of reflecting on the disruption. We can't change the disruptive force itself, but we can change how we respond to it. And that requires choice, not chance. Ultimately, chance is never going to bring you success. With choices, that are intelligently made in response to disruptive technology in our world, which we can't change, that choice gives us a great chance to be successful. And we intentionally make those choices and we rigorously follow them. Now, before I take you into habit number one, in case some of you want to claim CPD uh, locally here, I'm going to do four polls because that's usually the mandatory requirement for CPD or CPE. And I'll do them very quickly. They're very confidential, by the way. So would you be kind enough just to fire away, click on one of the following, which answer below most accurately reflects the number of staff you employ? That's brilliant. Just a handful more to vote. Uh, brilliant. If you need confirmation that you've attended the course, uh, stayed for the duration and answered the four polls, if you just email Craig, I'll give you Craig's details at the end of the webinar. For those of you watching it uh, online, you can also simply do the same. Brilliant. Let me just share the uh, results with you so we can see who we've got today. So uh, the bulk of us, somewhere between five to 10 staff, 14% up to 25 and 5% up to 50. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So let's go to habit number one then. And habit number one is staying free of the trusted advisor myths. Uh, this is a choice and these myths uh, almost somewhat sinisterly cloak us without us knowing it sometimes. So here are some myths. Trusted advisor means they trust me because my primary job is to keep them within the law on tax, legal business responsibilities. Trusted advisor means compliance work is what they expect and want me to do. Trusted advisor implies an hourly rate for specified accountancy work. Trusted advisor implies it's not appropriate for me to sell. Trusted advisor implies it's not appropriate for me to offer services outside of finance. Now, Staying free of these trusted advisor myths, sometimes to break out or to break through, we have to break up or break free. And I want to say as strongly and as clearly as I possibly can that trusted advisor in truth actually means they, your clients and potential clients, as we will see, want more from you, not less. They want business growth, business improvements, and business success. They do not want compliance. Now, don't shout at me and get angry. Compliance, they have to have. They don't want it, though. It's a grudge purchase. Nobody actually wants it. They, you know, they're as irritated as you are with your SARS. They have to have it, yes, but they don't want it. They want something else. And they want it, ideally, from somebody who is more successful or as successful as they are and who actually inspires them. 
And they want what you incredibly skilled and gifted people have learned in many spheres of life and business. You've seen far more than they've seen. You've seen a breadth of business experience that they can't hope to match. And it's time you realize you've got it. They will gladly pay you more, but only if you give them more and explain to them why that has huge value for them. So success means break up those myths, please. Stay free of their damaging, limiting impact. They're a chain, a cage that limit you. And what's worse is they stop you offering some great resources that your clients actually want. And let's habitually instead respond to the privilege and the opportunity and the responsibility that trusted advisor status really does bring. So that's myth number one, break up the trusted advisor myth. The second habit, and I, I get this over quickly because I know I stand the risk of losing you here, folks. Let me tell you, I've been a consultant for nearly four decades. Uh, and I've done plenty of partner away days where we've gone through vision, mission, and plan. And I know those words are treated with huge skepticism. And by the way, for pretty good reason. What I want to introduce to you is the possibility that forget the partner away days and the clever consultants with their facilitating techniques that end up charging you a lot of money, giving you words on a page that make no difference to your life. I want to talk about something that's authentic, that's not easy to arrive at. But at least if I could share the possibility with you, maybe half of you would give this a crack and maybe half of you would see your own lives change and your own firm's lives change. More importantly, your clients' lives and businesses change. So let me give you a backdrop to this. Success, we've said, cannot be left to choice or chance. It has to be based on intentional uh, choices, I should say. And in the process, one of the big challenges for accountants and tens of thousands of accountants in the uh, four continents I've consulted have talked to me over the years about the challenge of differentiation. How do we differentiate ourselves? We're an intangible service. Well, we'll see a couple of ways, and it can be found in a number of ingredients. But interestingly for me, it starts with this rather subjective area, which is authentic, believable mission and vision. So each statement, a mission statement, a vision statement, and uh, values statements, which we'll not go into today, has its own quite distinct function in the strategic planning process for any size of firm. Some of you will be sole practitioners today. It applies to you every bit as much as it does to uh, the top 100. So a vision statement is not about doing an exercise that ticks a box, gets you CPD or CPE points. It actually makes you face the question, where do you want to go? And vision, if it's authentic, will answer that question. So it describes your organization as it would appear in a future successful state. In other words, vision doesn't exist yet. It's describing something that in your mind's eye you see and that you want to look like in three years, five years, or 10 years. I don't mind what time frame you use. And if you get this right, it is inspirational and aspirational. It inspires us, gives us energy, but it also helps us uh, get an aspiration for something we don't yet have. And that in itself begins to pull us towards the very thing we've described that we haven't seen yet. Mission is quite different. A mission statement explains the company's reason for existence. And please don't ever answer that question with the word compliance because I'll probably shoot myself. It describes the company or department. It describes what you do, but more importantly, what your overall intention is. And the mission statement is there to drive you to the vision that doesn't exist yet. So the mission should already be in place. It needs articulating and clarifying. And if it's authentic, and if you actually believe in it, it will help you drive towards your vision. So here is task number one. And by the way, don't expect to get this right the first time you do it. 
get yourself some magic whiteboard. That's those beautiful little uh, sheets that you can stick up on a wall and uh, they do no damage. You can peel them off and reuse them. Or if you've got an easel with a flip chart, use it. Spend some time in your calendar, put it in there and begin shaping mission and vision. Now, how do you do that without an external facilitator or coach? Dead easy. I give you five questions and these will not give you a perfect outcome, but they will get you moving towards a believable, authentic outcome. What does my firm exist to do is question one. Talk about it together. And please don't tell me bookkeeping, compliance or audit. Number two, what type of businesses do we serve and what would make the ideal type of business? And by the way, while you're having that conversation, are there some clients we should actually very nicely and politely and appropriately get rid of? And are there some different types of clients we should actively look to source? And then what are our reasons for the answers to questions one and two? And what do those reasons tell us? And then ask this question, what kind of advisory services could we offer that have got purpose attached to them? And number five, what's the one clear offer we can make to new or existing clients that is different, it's easy to understand, quantify, and believe? Now, how do you do it? I, my advice would be very simple. Spend no more than an hour, perhaps 45 minutes, and then forget it. Write it up on the flip chart, forget it. Don't even think that you're going to get close to it. But come back to it a week later, bring some coffee and, or wine and beer and pizza, whatever you do, whatever you're uh, bore of us, that's what you bring, or bring some built on chips in and uh, just have a little review of where you've got so far and then go through the questions again. And what you'll find over time, you'll do it three or four times. Don't be under pressure to solve it in one session because you won't do it. Uh, but you will over three or four times begin to see something emerge as in the in-between times, you get time to reflect on it. Now, once you've got an authentic vision or mission, you need a plan. And this is dead simple, of course. Who does what, by when, and how? If you haven't got that, forget it. It's just a, a wish list. What are the impact on our finances? Uh, what are we going to do to get new clients? How do we remove our costly clients appropriately? Who can we give them to? What does it mean to staffing? What does it mean to culture? Uh, what are we actually going to do about new client acquisition? And lastly, C4S. If you're taking notes, please jot this one down if you would. C4S is conditions for success. So you need to identify what they are and you need to have a time frame for checking how close you are with each of those conditions for success. Here comes poll number two, mandatory poll number two for me, not for you. But if you'd be good enough to fill it in, that would be great, please. Which answer below most accurately represents the number of clients that you serve at your firm? If you'd go ahead and do that for me, that'd be great. Oh, that's fantastic. Just around 90% of you. Just a couple more to go, if you would, please. Thank you. Let's share those results. So 46% up to 100 clients, 8% up to 250, 33% up to 500, and 13% uh, up to 1,000 clients. So that's a very normal spread, by the way, on these events, if that's helpful to know. So thank you for uh, doing that so quickly. Habit number three, then, is to understand or really understand what your clients want. 65% of your clients will use their smartphone or tablet for business every day. And do you actually believe that number is going to decrease? Of course you don't, nor do I. It can only go in one direction. Problem is, I'm, I'm not convinced that more than a handful of intelligent accountants have really clocked this and also clocked the difference that means. What it does mean all the data, and this is not my data, this comes from Accounting Web, Accounting Today, uh, from Zero and QuickBooks, who have just done surveys recently, uh, and many other places, that clients' expectations have changed. Increasingly, they want mobile. What that means in turn is they don't want what I call historic, redundant compliance data. They don't want to keep looking in the rearview mirror 
when at the end of February we finish lodging the uh, the tax returns and then it might be June or July before the client gets them and we talk them through it. Folks, I understand that's where many of us are, but your clients do not want to be there. Right now, if they're using Zero, QuickBooks, Sage, uh, Iris, MYOB, any of the other accounting packages, they're getting on-demand uh, data and they want it. They want it in real time. And all the surveys suggest that a majority of clients worldwide want more from you. Uh, by you, I mean from us as accountants or advisors. 56% of SMBs plan on using accountants for value-added services such as management consultancy. And if you think, well, that really doesn't describe what I offer. Just bear in mind, that's the language that clients are using because they don't know what else you can offer them. So they can only lump it in this one category. With the proliferation of cloud adoption, the end of nine to five compliant historic reporting is imminent and inevitable. And in that context, still, as accountants and advisors, we are seen as the most trusted advisor. And you probably get this told you many times, but please allow an old boy like me just to say it once more. Trusted advisor, there is no other profession on the planet that's trusted as much as you are as accountants. I was thinking about that Paul Davis, my accountant. I ask him about my will. I ask him about my car. I ask him about we have a, a yacht charter business, one of many businesses which I run. But I'll ask him about particular ways we could fund equipment. There is nothing I wouldn't ask my accountant. That's an amazing amount of trust in one individual. What a privilege then, what a responsibility, but also folks, don't forget, what an incredible opportunity. And uh, I read this quote recently and I thought I, I'll put this in today's webinar. In 40 years of consulting, I've never yet come across a client who resented being telephoned or visited by their accountant to show them ways that they could be better, cheaper, more profitable, more successful. Almost none of them have enjoyed that experience. Paul Davis has never called me and offered me business advice or shown me ways I could be better, cheaper, and more profitable unless I've asked him. And he's a great accountant. He's become a very close friend. But that's typical of the way many of our clients feel about their experience. So that leads me into our fourth habit, which is please start thinking about successful, profitable alternative services that you can offer. The automation we've talked about, we'll look at it again in just a moment, already means management accounts are automated, tax returns, other taxes, payroll dividend vouchers, auto enrollment, it's all automated. So how about then learning to shift from pure compliance? And yes, I understand compliance still has to be done, doesn't necessarily have to be. You, you can offshore it or do some creative uh, handling of it, but bear in mind it's going to increasingly become a commodity product, necessary but commoditized. So, how about starting to shift towards mentoring clients, doing SWOT analysis, maybe introducing marketing and growth programs, tax efficiency and plannings, KPI benchmarking, balance scorecards, legacy planning, exit planning. Folks, I'll say it again at the risk of boring you. There is nobody on the planet they trust more than you to do this stuff right here. So number crunching is going to take a back seat. And as it does, what we call BAS emerges from the womb. Now, BAS is simply business advisory services. And I prefer that term to value add because value add's been used so for so long, it's kind of got uh, old and it drags some debris around with it. But a business advisory service, I'm hoping, is a fresh take on what has perhaps been positioned in your thinking before. Business advisory services bring you closer to clients. They enable you to dig deeper, and importantly, and maybe we'll do a whole webinar on this at some point, it changes your pricing model forever. If you want to get more profit per partner hours, you will never do it with billable hours. You just will not do it. If you move from the transactional, the commodity-based pricing to relational, tailored, advisory pricing, it means you change your pricing models dramatically and permanently. And there are several ways you can do it. They're not complex, folks. You move to a value-based pricing proposition or you move to an outcome 
based pricing proposition, you give your clients uh, in turn what they really want and be much more profitable yourself. But let me appeal to your emotions a little bit here, if I may. What, what is it, if you could think back, that got you into the accounting profession in the first place? I can guarantee it was not the thought of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or 40 years of compliance grind. There was something in your heart or in the visionary part of your makeup that had a belief that you could make a difference. And I want to encourage you to revisit that early calling to the vocation you're in. As the compliance cage gets lifted, it releases us in a way we've never been released in our profession to fly again. Once that cage is gone, the wings can stretch out. And again, I can't do this justice uh, just now on the webinar, but let me give you some seed thoughts that hopefully will stimulate your thinking and maybe for some, if not all, blow the autumn leaves that have covered the aspirations and vision or purpose-driven uh, emotions that you had when you first engaged in this profession. So think what it is you would most love to do with clients. Think what that would be. Think how you could package it. Give it a name. Show the client what the outcome will be to them. That means you show them what problems it solves. You show them what pain it removes. You show them what gain or improvement it produces. And that is habit number four, business advisory services with purpose. I want to encourage you, kind of exhort you even to rethink about the purpose that got you into this world of accounting, which is a marvelously privileged world in the first place. And then the fifth habit is TMAI. That is test, measure, adapt, and improve everything in client acquisition and just learn to stop what doesn't work. Now, before I give you some clues here, let me, if I may, launch poll number three and just get you really quickly to select one or more of the following, if you would, please, on the screen. Just a couple more of you to go. Uh, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's close up and let's share the results. Uh, zero, 20%, MYOB4, Sage 72, QuickBooks 8%, and not yet used in cloud 16%. Thank you very much for that. Uh, by the way, it's really interesting. The results to that poll do vary dramatically depending on the country. So your 8% QuickBooks, 72% Sage, 20% zero. In the States, it'll be 2% zero, 80% QuickBooks, 5% Sage. In Australia, it'll be 85% zero, uh, about 20% MYOB and about 5% Sage. It's fascinating how the uh, different continents have got different take up of these software and cloud products. So Referral generation, social media, blogs, pay-per-click, seminars, webinars. Uh, what is it that you're using in your current client acquisition? And make sure you know the cost of every activity, the response by that activity, and what is called the CAC, the CAC, the customer acquisition cost of that activity. And please hear it from somebody who is a marketing professional. If you can't measure it, it isn't working. And if it isn't working, stop it or charge it to somebody else. <laughs> what I'm looking for is a marketing activity that you've tested, you've measured, you've adapted, you've improved. And to do that, it means you must know the cost of every activity. You must know the response of every activity and therefore the CAC of that activity. Habit number six is to focus on your website. And I'm going to give you three surprising essentials to make your website work, really work. And the first one really will surprise you. Right now, you need to have SSL on your website. And that stands for Secure Socket Layer. 
It's a standard encryption technology used to transfer data from a user's browser to a web server. And on a website, the secure transfer, if it's got secure socket layer, is marked with HTTPS, see my arrow on the screen, in the URL instead of the old HTTP. Now, folks, I don't expect you to understand this. It's not important you do. What is important to hear is you need it. And it's obviously important for companies and websites that collect personal information and process financial data. But what about your firm? Well, firstly, it shows you're serious about security. That's a reputational plus. And because it's marked with HTTPS rather than HTTP, people can see that. But what's really important, and the reason I'm sharing it with you is, Google are now effectively penalizing HTTP websites when it comes to search traffic. So if you have HTTPS, they prioritize the crawling robots by default, which will improve your search engine optimization chances. Uh, and here is a practitioner who's known globally on the whole uh, concept of secure socket layer, uh, Lukas Zelensky. Do I think HTTPS is necessary? Not really, unless you're asking your website visitors for confidential information or taking payments. However, it could mean the difference between a page ranking at number one or number two in search, and that's what makes it necessary. Now, you won't understand from that very superficial introduction uh, much about it. If you'd like to know a lot about it, go to fourdots.com. Can you see that down here? Or ask Ed or Craig at the My Firms at Cape Town office, and I'll give you their uh, details at the end. But either way, get your techie or your web provider to redirect your server to point to HTTPS instead of HTTP. Website essential number two is about a call to action. But let me illustrate this with a metaphor, if I may, and humor me momentarily, if you would. Imagine you're looking for a lifelong partner and you've been on a dating website and you go out on your first date. Maybe you're in the Table Bay Hotel in Cape Town. My wife and I spent some very happy days there just recently. And you're on your first date. You're looking out over the bay or Robin Island or whatever it is, and you look starstruck into your date's eyes. And on this first date, when all you know about them is what you've picked up online, you say, will you marry me? Well, you know the answer. Uh, only in the movies and probably not even then. Now, why have I used that metaphor? Well, it's exactly what most of us do on our websites, because most visitors to your website are not ready to inquire. In fact, 90% or more of your website visitors won't be ready to make a genuine, uh, valuable or authentic inquiry. So if we're not catering for them, we're losing the bulk of our website visitors. And the way we cater for them, uh, by the way, when we did this as a webinar recently, 96% of the attendees on that webinar had no compelling soft offer or call to action, which is what it's called on the website. So what is a soft offer or a call to action? It is something compelling, engaging, and free that is available instantly or in a few seconds that is valuable to the visitor in exchange for basic visitor's data, and it starts the relationship. So back to my dating metaphor, what would have been appropriate in the Table Bay uh, Hotel on that first date would have been to ask for this person's telephone number or physical address so you could send some flowers, champagne, or invite them to a game of rugby or a meal or whatever it's going to be. And it's the same application metaphorically on the website. So here are some typical calls to action. These are useless, by the way, folks, and I, I'm using that word in the cleanest clinical sense. They have no use. Uh, register or log in, free resources, sign up to an e-newsletter. This one just made me cross. Request a consultation with Claremont Accountants. Why? Who are they? What's the point of this? A free consultation about what? Teeth whitening? Who knows? Here was a, a better one. Over 100 free business guides, over 50 free personal tax guides. Sign up now. That was pretty good. 
until you clicked where it says sign up now. And the form had 17 fields, one seven fields for me to fill in, including one of these horrible little validation uh, icons where I have to try and screw my eyes up to read what it's even saying. By the way, uh, every additional field you add will cost you 5% of the people that would otherwise engage. So a, a good target is around three or four max fields. This is much stronger. Download a free white paper on tax. Uh, here's some other examples from other fields. Accounting software for business owners who dislike bookkeeping. Start now, five minute setup. That's a pretty good call to action or start here with a 14 day trial. This one was brilliant. It's the best in class, really. Contractors, would you like to take home 80% after tax? Contact us urgently to find out how we can help you. Nicely worded, it's got a clear benefit. It even manages to get urgency in this little panel. But sadly, when you clicked it, the click was broken. Note to self, note to you wonderful people in South Africa today. Check your links once a week. Make sure they're working. Tip of the week, that's not a bad thing. Now, of course, you'd expect me to say this, but I want to say it with authenticity, and I can. I've been marketing call to action uh, suggestions for over three decades, pre-website and, of course, uh, in the last 15 years on websites. The app that is customized is the best call to action I have ever worked with in my 40 years as a consultant to the accounting community. And the reasons are dead simple. Every other call to action in my life, if it ever got used, it got used once or twice. Let's say it's a report about tax or about inheritance planning or whatever it was. If I read it, I read it once. The app gets used increasingly over time. So it's a call to action that once your clients see the value of, they will use it increasingly over time and they carry it with them 24-7. My iPhone woke me up this morning in my bedroom. I took it from the bedroom to the bathroom. Strange habit, possibly it's what I do. From the bathroom, I brought it to the boardroom where I'm currently presenting to you. This evening, I will hopefully go out to the bar with my wife, Jill, for a, a nighttime drink before finally hitting the sack in my bedroom again. And all day, my smartphone has gone with me. Now imagine that smartphone with your custom app on it in your client's pocket, briefcase, uh, or hand. 24-7. Now, website essential number three is to get smartphone detection. And this is fantastic. This is one of two game changers I'm going to share with you uh, before we're done today. When you get a custom app, and remember, you get a free trial of this app anytime during my presentation, just type free trial in the question box and you'll get an app which you keep yourself. You can use it. It's not a custom app what you'll get. It's an app you can have to use and trial and test yourself. But when you get a custom app, what my team does is to put what's called a smartphone detection on your website. It's a little piece of invisible text that's intelligent. So anytime somebody browses your website using mobile or tablet, a little dialogue pops up um, and it says to them, hi there, I see you're using your mobile to visit our website. Would you like to download our free app? And my best story, I've got loads, but my best one is a small sole practitioner whose turnover is less than 100,000 UK pounds, whatever that is in rands. I forget the rate right now, uh, but you can work that out real quick. So it's tiny. I mean, how do you even pay for the kid's education on that? I've no idea. But he decided to get a custom app. And uh, this custom app, went live. He had it as a call to action on his website, but he had smartphone detection. And week one, this smallest of all our custom app clients, a visitor to the website uses mobile. Up pops the dialog box. Hi there. I see you're using your smartphone to browse our website. Would you like to download the free app? He downloads it. He hits the call me now button which every customer has, gets straight through to the accountant, says, love this app, can we have a meeting, arranges the meeting. On the way to the meeting, he uses the mileage tracker, which I'll show you momentarily. And by the time he gets to that meeting, he's ready. And of course, he signs up. It's my best story because it's the smallest 
customer client we have, and yet it works for him. So number seven, and of course you were waiting for this one, so let me not disappoint you. Please consider launching your own app and embracing this mobile world of the changed landscape, the disruptive technology. 83% in a, in a survey done three weeks ago of accountants globally believe that understanding technology is now as important to their job as understanding accountancy. The cloud is growing and the big tech know-how is essential for accountants. Let me give you a couple of uh, data points to help you understand just how this shift has already penetrated. Mobile use has already overtaken web. Apps account for 89% of time spent on mobile with the other 11% spent via websites. So what we're saying is um, mobile activity, 89% is within app. Only 11% of mobile time is spent direct on website. Mobile is now the first screen and you can see the graphs are not spent long on them, but over 200 billion downloads last year. Worldwide time spent in apps grew by 25% last year. And it's real estate that you should own. Now, I want to say this as clearly as I can. We work with Sage. We work with Zero, We work with QuickBooks, the three cloud providers that you said you good folks use. And I don't want to slag them off, but I do want to warn you about their predatory intent. And here's a statement which, if you really understood this, should make the hair on the back of your head stand on end, because this is Gary Turner from Zero. He's the CEO. And he says, as I mentioned before, the Zero app, you could insert Sage app, QuickBooks app, is high usage with customers using it multiple times per week. Let me stop right there, folks. Did you actually understand what I said then? with customers using their app multiple times per week. These are your customers. And if you watched the TV ads over the Christmas break in South Africa, you would have seen QuickBooks, Sage, MYOB, Zero, all going for your SMB business owners direct. What Zero go on to say is the point I'm trying to make, and it's this, the front screen says Zero of any mobile device is prime time real estate and a great place to be seen. If you add to the fact that these predatory cloud providers are actually trying to get direct access to your clients, it's also worth remembering the add-on community. Now, you'll have heard this postulated by many of the good and great in the accountancy press in the last few months. And I'm not gonna spend much time on it except to say this, there are hundreds of add-on apps that you are often being encouraged to offer your clients sometimes 5, 10, even 15 apps, which drain significant time and energy from you. And it's worst of all, getting messy and confusing for your clients. Now, here's a few examples. This is what QuickBooks wants their accountants to offer the clients. This is what Sage wants you accountants to offer your clients. 80% uh, of you are on Sage. You've probably already been encouraged to offer these apps to your clients. And I want to tell you, it's big. It's a big problem. Here's what Xero want you to offer your clients. Here's what uh, QuickBooks we've done. Here's what Exact uh, want you to offer your clients. So you are being asked by your clients on the one hand and by the online or cloud uh, suppliers on the other to try somehow to get your clients using all these apps and using online software. And it is as confusing as it looks on the screen. So you've got you here, the accountant, and you've got your uh, client systems and data, and you've got all these apps and online solutions being offered. It's incredibly messy. And the biggest risk of all is disengagement for you as the accountant. This mess, this digital confusion means if you're not careful, you're going to be disengaged. So what if you instead got a custom app? And please watch the screen right now. When you get a custom app, uh, what actually happens is that all this uh, comes straight into your app. Oops, he says confidently having missed a slide. It also, by the way, helps you with your onboarding. 
training and ed education because uh, these same firms want you to offer their online software solutions. And these on onboarding requests take huge amounts of time out of your world in terms of training, education, signing them up. So the custom app will do that for you. Let's say they're exploring QuickBooks, or in your case, it might be Sage. On your custom app, you have all the QuickBooks or Sage videos, why QuickBooks, how to use QuickBooks, how to uh, set up an account with QuickBooks, and now they can log in to QuickBooks all from your custom app screen. You own that home screen. The GPS mileage tracker is one of the most commonly used tools on the apps in South Africa. And it's very straightforward. They simply hit the start button on, on your custom app. They hit the stop button and the app will then send you a CSV file either in the moment, once a day, once a week, whatever you want, so that you can import it directly into your Excel or Sage or Xero or QuickBooks software. The same is true of expense management. Now, you've just done your February uh, tax year end. And I imagine for a lot of you listening, expenses have been a nightmare, a bit of a headache. Well, it doesn't have to be any longer. Your client simply hits either Receipt Bank, if you're integrated with Receipt Bank, or they hit the Receipt Management function. It will open up a, a screen where they then choose where they want to allocate this expense. And it's a beautifully designed graphic screen. So it doesn't have nominal codes or ledger numbers against them, but what they're actually doing is choosing the ledger allocation for you. They take a photograph of the receipt, and it's uh, obviously stored, but then exported to you as a CSV file, either in the moment or once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever you want. Now, I've looked at this, folks, and, and please feel free to challenge my calculations because everything else I've given you so far, I can say hand on heart, absolutely confident it is exactly as I've described it. This is my best guess, so I can't say it. But feel free to give me your feedback on this. But just those two tools alone, and on the free app, you'll get to use them. You'll get to try them for yourself, see how they work, see how easy they are to use. Mileages and expenses quickly, consistently ready for immediate use, exported to you for use in Excel or on your software. Let's say it only say 15 minutes per month per client. If you've got 250 clients, that's 750 hours saved per annum. You've got 500 clients, that's 1,500 hours per annum. Now, folks, like I say, this is my best guess, but let's say I've exaggerated it tenfold. I can't be that far out, but let's say I have. It's still 75 hours or 150 hours saved per annum. That's a lot of billable hours saved right there. But importantly, the real game changer with a custom app, which is something never before been available for us in business generation, new client acquisition, or in operations or in communications. And that is the ability to send push notifications to your clients and to your potential clients. Now, push notifications are singular and instantaneous, aren't they? That's what they look like right here. And for that reason, they're direct and irresistible, which means you get an 80% higher open rate than email as a minimum improvement. Now, the user of your custom app will fill in the, the carefully designed form. The user then gets full access to your custom app with all the tools and interactions and interfaces that you want them to have. So you'd have Sage on there. You might have Receipt Bank. You might have Dropbox or Virtual Cabinet or uh, Iris or whatever it is you want. You get that data. And that data means you can now send personalized push messages to every client and potential client who has downloaded your app. So just one company alone who helped us in the beta mode of this about 12 months ago they ran a test over four months in three countries, and the data alone enabled them to identify 1,500 app users that were not already their clients. They followed them up, and they got well over 50, five zero customers worth over a quarter of a million uh, UK pounds in terms of contract revenue.
So this is what a push notification looks like. And the good news is this. You get all your app users' names, email, and telephone details. You can group those users. So, for example, what might you group? You might have, I don't know, Cape Town clients, but then you might have uh, clients, let's say, who are agricultural clients out in the bush or in the farmlands or wherever. You might have clients and non-clients. You might have, if you're a big firm, top 100 clients. If you're a small firm, which many of you are today, it might be your top 10 clients. You then have sector-specific segments or user groups, and you can then either send one-to-one -one push notifications. Literally, hi, David, it's nearly the end of February. I still don't have your mileage expenses. That's a one-to-one -one push notification. You can send it one to everybody, or you can send it as an individual targeted push to selected groups. So you might send one push notification to clients, one to not yet clients, uh, one to, let's say, agricultural clients, IT clients, manufacturing clients. Typical uses, well, you'll come up with far more than this, but maybe you're going to invite them to an event or a seminar a deadline reminder, document portals such as open space and virtual cabinet. You might say document X is awaiting sign off. I need it by the end of February. Uh, please get back to me directly. So because you can see exactly who has your app, you also know that these are active and highly interactive individuals. And this new data it's new in the sense that it, it might be totally new in some cases, but new in the sense that you know these are individuals who are highly interactive with your app. It enables you now to use the same data for your other marketing or communication. So you can send it with automated emails integrated, for example, into MailChimp or HubSpot or Pure360. You can send automated text messages. You can carry out personal follow-up calls you can use it for a direct mail. And better yet, we've simplified it so that you can actually send push notifications with your normal email. You simply send an email to, in this case, a client, BCMS Partners, and you type push at myfirmsapp.com into the CC box. Your client or potential client gets their email in the normal way, plus they get a push notification as well. And because it's as easy as using that CC box, anybody on the team can use it. And because it's easy and instant to use, you and your team will use it more. And all that means the well-documented, well-proven power of push notification can be put to work often, every day, in communications, in operations, and in marketing. So let's move on real quick here. We also automate that um, push notification for you. We'll give you 12 pre-written push notifications that go out once a month from you. And we'll also put that smartphone detection on your website. So that's why every delegate gets a free trial of the South African Accountants app. Everyone can download a totally free app and get a complimentary telephone walkthrough with my colleague Craig. Uh, you can see Craig's email at the bottom for those of you watching this online. Uh, but I would simply ask all of you watching now, if you would like a free copy of this app, just type free trial, please. And if you'd be kind enough, put the day and the ideal time that you would like this telephone walkthrough uh, to give you the app and explain how to use it. In a nutshell, what the app gives you is a customized version of an app which has your branding your firm your contact details your staff and on that app will be the interfaces with all the solutions you want your clients to use so if you want them using sage you want them using receipt bank uh, there will be certain tools uh, and calculators and things that are generic, which will help you. Again, all branded in your brand. You get the home screen of your client's smartphone and tablet, and you choose uh, which icons you want on there. And it simply means anytime your client wants to access Xero, 
or Sage or Receipt Bank or Virtual Cabinet or Dropbox or any of the other apps or online solutions that you want them to have. They access it through your home screen. You stay engaged and everything they do, they do through you. That's why it's so powerful. That's why it's so important to stop us losing our client's home screen to otherwise predatory software and cloud providers who, if we don't do it, will go direct to our clients. So you can have as many icons as you want uh, in the very low cost monthly fee, which Craig will explain to you, a totally customized app for you to give free to your clients and potential clients, keeping then the home screen of your client's iPhone, smartphone, or tablet with your branding, your name, your services, your contact details, and importantly, uh, with the interface to every cloud or online solution that you and they want to have, your choice. So an app is going to help you win clients. Yes, it's going to save you hours of time operationally. Yes, it's going to produce direct inquiries. Yes. So again, you get a totally free, full feature trial of the South African Accountants app. One of the team, probably Craig or one of his colleagues, will take you through the modules and features that over a thousand firms now love. They'll give you examples of how it's working for them. So simply type free trial, if you would, into the dialog box, plus any day or time that would be ideal for you to take your short telephone walkthrough conversation. So folks, please do go ahead, type that into the question box, uh, put the best time and day, if you would, on that question box too, and just go ahead, type free trial, please right now. Now, as you're doing that, that's the uh, content of today covered. I'm going to stay online for a few minutes and just answer any questions. So if you'd like to uh, ask me any questions, I'd be delighted to endeavor to answer them. Uh, feel free to leave the webinar now once you've typed in free trial. Those that would like to stay on and ask any questions, please go ahead and ask them now. It'll be my pleasure to endeavor to answer them for you. Oh, brilliant. A couple of you are asking what are the costs. It's an incredibly low cost uh, solution, by the way. Forey and Wilson and a few others, I think, are wanting to know that. It's uh, basically it's, a, it's 180 pounds, which is just around 3,000 3, rands per month. Craig will take you through the details. We set the rand so that there's no uh, equivocation about the rate and so on. That's everything that's totally customized with a marketing pack that helps you launch it to your clients and potential clients and uh, will also uh, give you access to a 24-7 helpline so that any help you need in marketing, operations, comms, using the app to make sure you get the absolute best out of it, uh, all included in that monthly fee. Very low cost and, of course, totally customized for you. So thanks for asking that. Any other questions, please, folks, while I'm still on the line? Uh, there's no setup fee. Somebody's asking me, is there a setup fee? No, uh, everything's done for you within that one monthly uh, cost. Any other questions, please? Brilliant, folks. Uh, that's it from me. Please do type any other questions or comments in the question box, which I will leave live uh, for the next two or three minutes. And then one of the team will be in touch with you directly after we shut the webinar down to make sure I think it's uh, around 20 of you requested a free trial. So be patient uh, with us as we uh, get you the day and time that you prefer. And one of the team will be in touch to help you with that. How does one change from HTTP to HTTPS? You need your techie to do that, Basil. Uh, again, uh, feel free to ask Craig or Ed on your call and also the address which I gave you on the slides. Let me take you back to that. What I'll do um, is I will copy that, Basil, I'll put it in my answer to your question so you've actually got it. You can copy it and it's a hyperlink 
Uh, bear with me while I just go back to that slide. Uh, where do we look at that? Let me find it for you. I'll copy this link and I'll put it in your in the answer to your question. So here we go. Let's copy that and let me paste it. Right, I've pasted that and I'm going to send it to all of you. So uh, yes, the slides will be available, Basil, and I've just now sent you the link. Everybody should have that link in your question panel right now. Brilliant. Folks, I'm going to leave you now. I will leave the platform up for just a couple of minutes and then one of the team will be in contact very soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. And on behalf of Ed, Craig, Bjorn, and Elena at the Cape Town office, God bless and look forward to speaking to you very soon. Take care.